Hello class, welcome again to Electrical Circuits 1. This time we'll continue the previous lecture on the basics of electric circuit theory. So we're done with 1.1 to 1.3. Now we'll come to power and energy. Power is the time rate of expending or absorbing energy. That is we can define P as dW over dt, where P is power, W is charge, T is time. Thus the now if we are to uh, and power is in watts, our energy W is in joules and our T time is in seconds. If we are to solve this further, dW over dt can be expressed as dW over dq times dq over dt, which is equal to as you may have remembered in the previous lecture, dW over dQ, this is our voltage. And dQ over dT, this is our current. Hence, P is also equal to Vi. Thus, the power absorbed or supplied by an element is the product of the voltage across the element and the current through it. If the power has a positive sign, then power is being delivered to or absorbed by the element. If on the other hand, the power has a negative sign, then power is being supplied by the element. But how do we know when the power has a negative or positive sign? The answer is, it is by the passive sign convention. Passive sign convention is satisfied when the current enters through the positive terminal of an element and P is equal to positive Vi. If the current enters through the negative terminal, then the power is equal to negative Vi. Now, so okay, so let's apply that in this example. The element in both of these circuits, it is absorbing positive 12 watts. Why? Because it's positive because cur this current enters the positive terminal of our element. As well as this one, this current enters through the positive terminal. That's why the power is equal to Vi, that is V is 4, I is 3, hence 12 watts. Another one. Both of these circuits, it is the power is negative 12 watts. Again, this is because Current enters through the negative terminal. Hence, P is equal to negative Vi. Hence, negative 4 times 3, that's equal to negative 12. Okay? So, take note to apply the passive sign convention for this. Now, the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can only be converted from one form of energy to another. So, this implies that a system always has the same amount of energy unless it's added from the outside. For this reason, the algebraic sum of power in a circuit at any instant of time must be zero. That is, the summation of our po power is equal to zero, which means our power supplied, um, this is a negative value, and our power absorbed, which is a positive value, if we add that together, it's equal to zero. Now, energy is the capacity to do work. It's measured in joules. And what we are paying for as reflected in our electric bill is actually energy, and it's not power. So it's worthwhile to note that electric power utilities, okay, they measure energy in kilowatt hour, okay? Here's an example. How much energy does a 50-watt computer monitor consume in two hours? How much will you pay if the rate is 10 pesos per kilowatt hour? Okay, so the solution, P is equal to power is the uh, rate of absorbing, uh, absorbing or expanding energy, right? So P is equal to um, delta W over delta T or simply P is equal to W over T, hence our W, that's our energy consumed, is equal to P times T, 
So that is 50, this is 50 watts times 2 hours. Hence, we have um, 100 watt hour or that's equal to 0 0.1 kilowatt hour. Since our rate is 10 pesos per kilowatt hour, so our total energy consumed is 0 0.1 kilowatt hour and our rate is 10 pesos per kilowatt hour. So our bill will be um, 1 peso. Hence, if you have a computer monitor which has a 50 watt rating, so and if the current um, electric um, rate, electric um, energy rate is 10 pesos per kilowatt hour, then you are going to pay 1 peso per 2 hours or that is 50 cents per hour. Well, now come to circuit elements. Diba, uh, as I said in the previous lecture, an electric circuit is simply an interconnection of the elements. Now, there are two types of elements found in an electric circuit. One is the active element. Second is the passive element. An active element is capable of generating energy. Examples of active elements are the generator. So this is the symbol our operational amplifier, here's a symbol, and our battery. Okay, This one is a two-cell battery. While a passive element is not capable of generating energy. So examples are the resistors, the capacitors, and the inductors. The most important active elements are actually the voltage and current sources that generally, generally deliver power to the circuit connected to them. There are two kinds of sources, independent and dependent sources. An ideal independent voltage source provides a constant voltage or current that is completely independent of other circuits. Actually, an um, physical sources such as batteries and generators may be regarded as approximations to the ideal voltage sources. Okay. Um, if you are to be general, an ideal independent source, whether it's a voltage or current, they provide um, constant value. Okay, so for an ideal independent voltage, voltage source, so a constant voltage. For an ideal independent current source, then a constant current. Um, regar um, regardless of the other circuit elements. So they always give um, the value specified. For our independent voltage source, for example, our battery and our generator, so these are the symbols that we usually use. For, for this one, this symbol, we use this for AC or DC. Okay. Now, if we are in our, let's say in our problem, if we are going to use this symbol, you know that it is a AC because the value will have um, something, um, a sinusoidal value, it will have a sinusoidal value, this voltage source. So if it has a sinusoidal value, then you assume that this source is AC. Now, if the value given in the problem is just a constant value, then you can assume that this one is a DC voltage source. Pwede ba? Pwede man sa AC, pwede po sa DC. So, ang saan nyo pag-determine, ingat to, magdepende mo sa value niya. Now, for this one, this is what I referred earlier. I'm only two-cell battery ni siya, kini single-cell battery. Okay. Pero, unya kay mga battery man na. So, DC na siya. Kini, basta na yung nga nga wave, sine wave. So, AC na siya. Okay. Kung kini o kini, gikombine, so still AC voltage. Okay. And basta yung na, independent na siya, nga voltage sources. Now, para sa independent current sources, kung yung ni, Arrow lang, circle then arrow, still AC or DC. Kung saan niyo mapag-determine kung AC ba na or DC, magdepende gihapon sa value. Then, pero kung nanay nga ni, nanay kining sa wave nga symbol, so AC gina siya, dayon. Darita sa ideal dependent source. So, on the contrary, the voltage or current value of an ideal dependent source is controlled by another voltage across or current through some other element. 
in the figure. So, for example, this one. Dependent voltage source, mo niya nga to ang um, symbol. Kine dependent current source. So, mamantayan ninyo, pareho. Sa voltage, um, na ay polarity nga sign, sa current, na ay arrow nga sign. Pero ang nakalahian sa independent o sa dependent, ang sa independent circle, ang sa dependent, kining diamond. Okay. And another thing to note is, tungod kay, ang kini sila nga mga sources kay, dependent man sila, sa katong value po sa voltage across or current so sa other elements, then pwede ni mong sila makontrol. That's why it's also called um, controlled sources. Okay. So, mo ni ang sample circuits nga nag-illustrate sa ito ah, uh, sa, sa, nga na ah, both ang independent o dependent sources. So, para niyo, na kay independent source nga battery 5 volts, na kay dependent voltage source nga 10I, ni ang kini nga I, asa man eh, kini man nga current, di ba? Kay, kay going through element C. Nagpasabot, ang kini nga voltage ni Modri A, ah, nagdepende sa value nga ning agi dari kay element C. Nagdepende sa value sa current nga ning agi dari kay current C. Okay, so kung i-adjust na yung current dari, then ma-adjust po ni imuhang voltage dari. Another is this one. A, an independent voltage source, 20 volts. So DC ni siya. Okay. Then kini na po, um, dependent nga current source. Asan ni siya nag-depend? Nag 0.2i. Asan ni i? Nara. Toto pa, nagdepende ni siya. Ang value aning uh, current source nagdepende sa current sa ato ang voltage source. Okay? Well, now come to our summary. So far, um, we, we talked about um, these things. That is first, an electric circuit consists of electrical elements connected together. Second, current is the rate of charge flow. Mga DQ over DP siya. Voltage is the energy required to move one column of charge through an element. Sa to pa, the energy required per column. So mga um, DW over DQ. Then power is the energy supplied or absorbed per unit time. It is also the product of voltage and current. According to the passive sign convention, power assumes a positive sign when the current enters the positive polarity of the voltage across an element. So, kung sa negative pod na terminal, then negative pod na yun ang power. Uh, six, an ideal voltage source produces a specific potential difference, or that is specific voltage, across its terminals regardless of what is connected to it. Okay. An ideal current source ay nga 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 na um, tungkol kaya ideal man siya. Okay. Pero sa actual ana ang voltage source um, kung dako kayo mong load mo drop na siya. Nay na drop. Okay. Sa ito pa mo vary. Pero um, dilipon nga ka ng dako yung kayo. Pero kung i-idealize na ito kung mag magkinaon dako ba yung load or dili um Kung unsa ay mong indicate nga voltage, mo gina ihatag sa um, ideal voltage source. Ika-7, an ideal current source produces a specific current through its terminals regardless of what is connected to it. Okay. 8, voltage and current sources can be dependent or independent. A dependent source is one whose value depends on some other circuit variables. Mao nga, pwede, ang dependent sources, pwede mo siya makontrol. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's it.